Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Christian Indie Writers Podcast, where we inform, encourage, and support Christian Indie Writers on their journey toward publication. I'm Rhonda Hagerman, and I write in many, many, many genres, including nonfiction, along with my brother, under the uh, pen name, Dee Dee Bowman. Hi, I'm Christina Katane, and I write Christian dystopian fiction. Hi, I'm Jamie Hirschberger, and I write very, very, very short stories under the pseudonym, a.k.a. Nom de Plume, a.k.a. pen name J.R. Nichols. And we're stretching the time today because we are short one host. So we figured <laughs> if we talked slower and said more words, you might not notice that there's only three of us talking today. Is not it working? That, that host is short. We're just short her. Yes. Yeah. I mean, she is the her. tallest of us, I think. I think yes, I believe so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, anyway... Thanks for everybody who's tuning in today and everybody listening live and all of our chatters. And um, thank you to anybody who's listening on iTunes or any of the other platforms where our audio is available. Uh, YouTubers, if you like what we do, remember to like and subscribe, please. And you can also go on over to our website and subscribe to our newsletter, which will ensure you never miss a single episode of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. So very well done. Very well done. And just to let everybody know, like, Jen isn't ill or anything like that. Everything is super great. Just cannot be here today. So hi to Jen. Maybe she'll be able to join us in the chat. I'm not sure. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, you guys have some commentary on your oh. long introduction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kristen says, oh. it's like someone trying to read the word count for an essay. Yes, jumbo you, font. Make yes, that you font. read that correctly. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, we like to start um, every episode with a segment we call What's Up. Um, and it's a time for us to check in with each other and our chatters and anybody who wants to tell us what they're doing um, in our writing and our personal lives. So, Tina, why don't you tell us what's up? What's up? Well, I've just been writing and I, I you know, we did that whole Clifton Strengths thing. Yes. And my number two is intellection. So I have mm -hmm. to think a lot about stuff. And so I was doing this question the premise thing because I heard this really cool thing the other day about people who have that high think the high thinking strengths, like have thought about their story so much mm -hmm. in their mind. And so they have this, they want to make a t-shirt that says question the premise. Yes, I can't edit a blank page. Oh, that's <laughs> fun. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to write this scene from a new character's point of view and I really don't I feel like I need to write the backstory so that I can understand him so then I um questioned that premise and Ooh. I said mm. well do I really need to write the backstory if it's so developed in my brain Very so then good. I questioned that and I said <laughs> um what what if I write it and it comes out better than what it is in my brain Wow. Hmm. Um, yeah. And I also said, well, I'm not going to use it in the story, but what if it's so good I end up using it in the story? Hmm. And then um, it brought me all the way back around to writing the backstory. <laughs> so I, I, I was like caught in a QTP loop. <laughs> yeah. the yeah. But you were smart so, enough to get out of it. I agree. Yeah. It Reminds me of that quote, there's freedom waiting for you on the breezes of the sky. And you ask Ooh. yourself, what if I fall? Oh, but my darling, what if you fly? Mm. So instead of looking at, you know, oh, I will never sell this book. You know what I mean? Like you can change your mm -hmm. thinking to be a little more optimistic, Tina. And I really yeah. appreciate that message because I think all of us could use that right now. And here's my shameless self-promotion. If you <laughs> haven't yet signed up for my newsletter, you might want to do that today, ChristinaCatane.com, because I am going to put the backstory that I wrote in my newsletter tomorrow. Oh, oh nice. I love it. What, that's a great yeah, idea. That's great. Um, want to hit the chat maybe a little bit there, Rhonda and Tina? Teresa's got a what's up. She says she finished her first round of edits this morning, a oh, few days ahead of schedule. Wow, that's awesome. Being ahead of schedule is great. Piper mm -hmm. says she's got to 25% of her word count goal for book three. Wow. wow. That's Already. Very she's finding tons of research and learning lots of fun stuff to include in her story. Well, it's good when you're excited about the work. It's good to see you, Piper. I think we missed you, I think. Um, I don't know. Um, 
No, maybe not. Okay, Shell, what's up? Finished outlining my short story, finished an arc read and post review. And that was a goal you had, Shell. Mm -hmm. I think that that was uh, an announced goal. So good for you for making that goal. Good and Piper said, awesome. yeah, Tina. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And then moving on to what Tina was saying, Jason said that he has an argument in his head a lot about what, <laughs> questioning the premise. So yeah. he gets it. What, yeah. Rhonda, were so, you going to say? Uh, Tina, can really quick, can you just tell us, uh, you mentioned question the premise. Where did you get that? What is that from? I got that from the quick cast for the Becca Syme. We had her on the mm -hmm. show. If you <laughs> have missed that show, you might want to go check it out. Um, she talks about the Clifton strengths for writers and mm -hmm. she kind of analyzed our group and our strengths and how we work together for us mm -hmm. um yeah. but her quick cast was is just like life-changing in my well, opinion and i always want to point out that you're saying q u i t like thomas quit cast mm -hmm. because yeah. for some reason i hear quick cast when i hear it but it's quit cast and um that episode that we had i don't know what episode number it was but it was a, a clifton strengths episode i highly recommend it it's so good I think it was around 124 i believe 123 124 so Maria um, Johnson has mm, a what's up. Um, carrying on with my historical fiction. Hope to submit the third one to my publishers next week. Wow. Also, the awesome. interview podcast was last night on YouTube. Seemed to go. Oh, I saw oh, it. I, I think see it. I would say, Maria, I never would have guessed you were someone who, you know, would ever struggle with ever being putting yourself out there. Way to go. You were poised. You were confident. I think that you should count it as a success for sure. Way to go. Okay. I need a link to that and I will watch it as soon as we are done here. <laughs> um, okay. My what's up is I'm in my last week in Florida and I'm devastated by that, Aww. but I'm also excited to get back to my home state because we're having bonfires up there already. And hello. It was mm -hmm. it hit 75 th this week. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. And it Just was my allergies. <laughs> It was 90 here yesterday. So I was just going to say, you're getting out of there just in time. Yes, yeah. just in time. I don't think I need the last two weeks of uh, March in Florida next year. <laughs> but anyway, so that's up with me. So Jamie, tell us all about you. Okay, so speaking of question the premise, I'm so glad that Tina brought that up because I've been having a lot of like struggling that is so unnecessary. And we were talking about the Clifton strengths. So my particular gifting is I'm what's called strategic restorative, which means I'm able to see what's wrong with the system and diagnose the problem and recommend a solution. But the problem is when you are able to see problems, people don't like to hear from you because it's like, here's a problem, here's a problem. Anyway, sometimes you see problems where no problem exists. That's how much restorative finds the problem. And that's what I was doing. So my question, the premise was, I am a failure and I don't want to write a book because I missed a deadline that I had for myself. I had to question that premise. So because I missed my deadline for having my book written, I must not want it. I must just be a big loser who doesn't want to write a book. What? What does that even mean? Have I quit writing my book? No, I have not. Do you understand? It was like this weird perfectionist thing that I have where I make serious commitments and serious deadlines. I don't not honor my commitments to myself. And so to have done that was so offensive to myself that I was calling myself a loser. It was the weirdest thing. So I had to erase that false belief that I was not going to finish this book just because I missed a deadline. What in the world? Like that's where perfectionism can hide, you know, like in a person. And I'm just dealing with that. And it's so liberating to recognize that I haven't failed at anything. I'm and very proud of you, Jamie. That's awesome. So proud of yeah. you. So that's what Becca would call essential pain. Mm. Oh, she's one of them, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, All right. I just want to point out that Jason put his what's up. He said he worked on a lot of plotting this week. Also wrote a really emotional scene before church. Mm. <laughs> Not oh. such a good idea. Well, I guess it depends Aww. on your perspective, Jason. Yeah. yeah. Because if you cried through the passage sermon, you probably felt really great at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Always looking on the bright and he side. He went home and told his wife, 
Aww. Honey, my sermon was so moving. You should have seen Jason cry. <laughs> Brilliant. I That's knocked great. it out of the park today, honey. Right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I'm saying this then as an experience, Jason, as a pastor. Yes. Well. It sounds like yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to get us started in the topic now if everybody has said everything they want to say. Because mm -hmm. we're hoping to hear from our chatters quite a bit today because several of them are successfully published and would like to hear your tips and tricks too. But for right now, we will talk to Tina. Um, okay, now everybody, Tina does not feel like an expert. We right. had to force her to do this. Yes. Because we've seen her success and we want to do what she's done. So um, all we can tell you is she is going to tell us what she tried and what worked for her. So right. she clearly does not know everything about anything, but she knows a whole lot of stuff, like little amounts about a whole lot of stuff. So that's a perfect way to describe it, Rhonda. Way to go. Well, thank because you. Thank you. yeah, when Tina when we had Tina come on here, she's like, Well, the last thing I want to do is come on and be sounding like I think I'm some kind of a big mm -hmm. shot or a guru or whatever. And we're like, No, but Tina, you did some really difficult things. Mm -hmm. You actually did the hard work that a lot of people aren't willing to do. And you mm -hmm. do have the right to say, yes, I earned this mm -hmm. number one bestseller spot. Because she feels like yeah. some of it was accidental or whatever. Mm -hmm. that Serendipity. She, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Tina, you want to just kind of tell everybody that we're not you know, putting words well, in your mouth or whatever. Jamie, you mentioned earlier that we're not going to be talking about specifically placing ads. Oh, yeah. Right. So right. Yeah. what... what yeah, Tina, what are we going to be talking about? Well, um, we're not going to be talking about like Amazon ads or Facebook ads because I didn't do that. And I don't think that any of us are really prepared to give anyone advice on those things. But I did do some paid promotions. So I'm that's probably the only paid thing that I did that I'd like to talk about. Great. So most of what Tina is talking about is stuff that you all could do for free. So it's not anything that's going to cost you any money unless Tina says a promotion. And mm -hmm. then we might have to ask her, okay, is that one you paid for or whatever? But for the most part, she's not talking about like running a Facebook ad or running right. an Amazon right. ad. She's talking about marketing her book. Right. Okay. So um, Jamie, can you tell us, we have already started talking about marketing a little bit. So mm -hmm. what are we not going to cover in this one? We are. Right. We're not going to talk about all that stuff that you mm -hmm. should do before your book is even mm -hmm. on the shelves. Right, Tina? Mm -hmm. Because we talked before marketing starts when? Mm -hmm. When you're right. When you're writing your book, really. Yeah. When you choose your title, when you choose your genre, mm -hmm. um, as you're deciding on your book cover, all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah, your blurb, your look inside, KDP, all that would come well before what we're talking about today. Yes, and that's the metadata episode that we just had. So if you do need some tips and tricks and why does that count as marketing and how can that help you, go back and watch that episode because we covered each of those areas. In and I, I would say also the why isn't my book selling along yes. with the meta, metadata episode covers all that stuff mm -hmm. okay. um, that we just mm -hmm. mentioned. All right. And so now Maria's ready to take notes for marketing no. tips. And I just got to say, listen, guys, I'm just going to prepare you. Don't be looking for some earth shattering buried treasure secret. Most of what Tina is going to say is advice you've heard everywhere, but she mm -hmm. actually did it. Okay. Yes. So I don't want to hear, well, everybody says this. Yeah. Go do it and see if it works for you before mm -hmm. saying where's something new and fresh and improved. Okay. So yes. Bambina, what did you do i guess okay well the one thing that i did beforehand that we didn't really mention in the metadata or the why isn't my book selling episode was i started a mailing list mm, yeah um, and the statistics say that that's the number one way that uh, indie authors can sell books mm -hmm. is to have a mailing list where you so you can send out an email to your readers. I mean, if they weren't your readers, they wouldn't have signed up for your mailing list. Mm -hmm. So you know that you have an audience that's interested in buying your book. And so when you send out an email, and even if only 30% of those people open it and only 10% buy, you're still gonna get a better result than most other ways of, of marketing or promoting or advertising your book. Well, mm -hmm. and I feel like a big shill for this very podcast because I'm going to say, well, we also covered that. I, I mean, if you went to the Christian Indie Writers podcast and you 
uh, search for a mailing list. You can find episodes. Also, we have a newsletter chat every Tuesday talking about how mailing lists are great. So Christian Indie Writers Podcast is a fount of information already about mailing lists. So we don't have to dwell there too much. Rhonda, mm -hmm. do you have questions about mailing lists? Uh, no, but it seems like every expert pretty much across the board, it's the one thing all experts agree on is your mailing list is your number one most reliable advertising source. Would you yeah, agree? Marie yeah. Yeah. And I would say too, it's your, it's your connection with your readers. If you, um, if people buy your book off of Amazon, you don't know who they are. You don't mm -hmm. have contact with them um, mm -hmm. unless they leave a review with their full name on it, but you still don't have a way to contact them. But if you have a mailing list, you have their email address, you have direct contact with your readers. Great. How and often do you send so that out? Um, sorry about that. How often do you send that out, Bambina? Maria's asking. Uh, every Saturday. Every Saturday. And if you want to receive it, go on over to Christina Catane. Mm -hmm. Is it a .com, Tina? Yep, ChristinaCatane.com. You can sign up. And the little pop-up will pop up and you just sign in. All right. So the newsletter is the first thing you did, right? Yes, that was the I and I was working on that. Um, right, I started that right after I finished um, self publishing formula 101, which is a course mm -hmm. from Mark Dawson. And I took that, geez, but two years before I published my book. So I had been working on my mailing list. It was a little bit of a struggle to figure out what to offer people mm -hmm. since the book wasn't out yet. But uh, so it was a lot of starts and stops. And um, sputters along the way, but what was the best thing you did to gather uh, email addresses before you were published? Um, well, to be honest, I didn't get a lot before I was published. Um, it okay. was mostly Facebook. Most of my peeps are on Facebook and um, a lot of them were my friends. I have like 3000 friends on Facebook because I used to play this game um, where you helped each other out in the game. And so we just friend, you just friended everyone that played the game. Mm -hmm. So I have like, um, I probably have 500 people on there. I actually know. And then, um, a whole lot of game players, but mm -hmm. some of them have turned into readers. So I just, I just want to chime in. Maria is saying that it's interesting right now. She has a monthly newsletter and she's wondering if she needs to be in touch with them more. Maria, I happen to know your position. You have multiple books to offer your readers. So um, I might encourage a bi-monthly for you mm -hmm. with like a character profile. Like, have you met so-and-so, you know, to maybe pique interest in a book? And you can do that like in the second newsletter of the month or something. So you can continue your current monthly and then make the extra newsletter something that doesn't feel like a lot of work to you, an excerpt mm -hmm. or something that's like, you know, your readers would find value, but does not add a lot of work on your plate. I mm -hmm. only do two a month because I want extra opportunities right now to build my mailing list. So I make sure that those promos are in there. But again, I don't want to get mm -hmm. too much into newsletters because mm -hmm. and mailing lists because we've covered that an extensive way on this podcast. Yeah. So what's next, yeah. Tina? Um, or, thank you, <laughs> Jamie. Thank you, Jamie, for um, Jamie is the co-host of our newsletter chat. I don't know if everybody knows about that, but that's Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. So newsletter Thanks. chat with Jamie and Jen newsletter and sometimes Tina and Jen, yes. but never Rhonda and Jen. <laughs> never, never Rhonda's always never, at the Rhonda. beach. Yeah. <laughs> Get her out of yeah. the garden or the beach and we can right. have her. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So Tina, please let's move on so we can okay. get everything in. Okay. So I did all the, the, like the launch party thing. Um, that I feel like that was a success the whole launch party thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I, so I sold like $200 worth of books that, that at the launch party. Mm -hmm. And then right. December was crickets. Really? I, I made a sold like four books or something in mm -hmm. December, but then my audio book came out and I think this was part of the serendipity because the audio book went live and then I started to promote that. And really all I did was like announce it on my Facebook page, announce it on Twitter, announce it on Instagram, um, on my personal Facebook page. I didn't advertise anywhere. I didn't really put it in any promotions. I just told people. And there, I, apparently there was a lot of people that had been waiting for the audiobook because I sold like 16 of them on day one. Okay, so here's the thing right now, strategic, and sort of restorative is flaring up. Strategic is my number one. We totally need an audiobooks episode because yep. I was just chatting on Facebook and R Tina did what's called a royalty split. Like, I just can't even get into it right now. Too many words and not enough time, right? 
we need to have an episode about audiobooks mm-hmm. and how to get your book made into an audiobook because Bambina, that sold a whole big bunch of more books for you, didn't it? Right. Well, what mm-hmm. happened is, you know, the audiobook, you either had to have a credit through Audible or pay like the seventeen ninety five or whatever that the Audible book cost. But what it did is it drove sales to my ebook, which I had put on sale for 99 cents. Nice, mm-hmm. smart. See? Um, and those those sales went through the roof. So did you catch that? So Tina did not waste an opportunity. The audiobook was launching, so she discounted another one of her products so that mm-hmm. when people were dangling, the lure dangling in front of them brought them over to her page where she saw a discounted book and they pulled the trigger. That's a marketing mm-hmm. strategy. You understand? Yep. That's the difference between paid advertising and marketing strategies. So mm-hmm. Tina was very brilliant to make that choice. Mm-hmm. Um, Tina, you also chose categories in a special mm-hmm. way. Yes. Um, well, wait, categories. What does that even mean? Well, the category is you have to choose categories when you put your book up on Amazon or any um, Ingram Spark or Draft to Digital or Barnes and Noble, Kobo, any of them. They want to know what category to put your book in. And so, and uh, this is another reason why I say it's serendipity. And they have the girls have forbid me from using the word accident. I just want everyone to know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying serendipity because um, what I I always thought my book was Christian dystopian fiction, but that is not. There is no such category anywhere. So I had to go do some research and find authors that I felt my books were similar to, and look at their categories. And so that's how I chose Christian fantasy mm-hmm. as one of my number one categories. <laughs> And then Christian futuristic fantasy, and I forget what else. But so like books, authors like Frank Peretti, Ted Decker, um, the Left Behind series. I started looking at those kind of books, seeing what categories they were in and going and looking inside some of those books and just making sure that my book fit. And that's how I chose my category. Okay, I'm just... Again, for anybody who's brand new to even what categories are, what this really legitimately is, is sorting out the millions and billions of books that Amazon is selling to people so that people who are looking for a book like yours will find a book like yours Mm -hmm. when they go searching. So you have to tell Amazon what category to put your book in, Mm -hmm. or Amazon doesn't know which people to sell your book to. So this is what we're talking about. And the categories are a list. Like you can't just type in whatever to be your category. You've Mm -hmm. got to find the ones that Amazon has predetermined are the categories for sorting the books. Right. So Tina, it sounds like you did a lot of work to do that. Is there an easier way? Yeah, you could buy um, Publisher Rocket and they would do it for you. And one of the things they do is they tell you the size of your niche and how many books you need to sell to get to number one. I did not know that at the time. And I... I found I ended up in a niche that was rather small. Um, and so I wasn't so I'll, like the difference between Jennifer and I in this matter is that she writes romance and her na- her niche is huge. Mm-hmm. Com- there's like so many books that she's competing against mm-hmm. compared to the number of books I'm competing against. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But on so the other that hand, was part of getting that number one label. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So you, would you recommend uh, people start out with Rocket then? Publish your Rocket? If it, if it's not something that would be a financial hardship, mm-hmm. I have found it very helpful. They do all the work for you. And so mm-hmm. they would, it would tell you how many books are selling in that category, mm-hmm. how many readers are searching for it daily. Um, it gives it a score. And I don't remember exactly what the score is, but it tells you how many books you'd have to sell in a day to hit number one. So when I bought it, I think I only paid like 40 bucks and it's lifetime, right? It's not an ongoing five. It's like a deal what it is, in my opinion. Right. I found it to be worth the money. Yeah. Not everybody's going to want to choose to spend their money that way, but um, Mm -hmm. I did invest in it. Yeah. And really, if uh, I, I stumbled into the category that I would, because when I went on publisher rocket to see if there were better categories, there were not, I had chosen the best one for that fit my book. 
Yeah, and you so, do not know how to research. You are so bad at researching. How could you have ever gotten it on your own, Tina? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sarcasm okay. alert. <laughs> All right. Um, let's move on because I want to hear about this next section, which is paid newsletter promotions. Mm -hmm. Right. So that first time that I hit number one, um, I had also, so not only was my audio book released and um, that drove sales to my ebook, but I also did a fussy librarian paid promo, which is a newsletter you pay to be in it. And the cost is based mm -hmm. on your genre. Mm -hmm. Um so I can't tell you what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. It cost me $15. So um, it, that also went out that same weekend. So it was like a trifecta of things that I did. Hmm. Um, and so there's other ones. If you want to spend a lot of money, you can do BookBub. If, you, if you're trying to save money and go for the, the less costly ones that are effective, I took David Gogren's advice. He has a list. If you were to go search for him and look and look for his pro, um, paid promo list, he's got he's like evaluated them all based on costs. You know the expensive ones are obviously more effective, but there are mm -hmm. effective ones that aren't that expensive. Um, so my the second time that I hit number one, I did newsletter stacking, mm -hmm. which is I did a fussy librarian on Monday. Bargain okay. Books Day on Wednesday and E-Reader News Today on mm -hmm. Friday. And all three of those are on David Gogren's list as effective and their prices are lower. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like less than $20. I, I think I might have paid more than $20 for E-Reader News Today, but mm -hmm. I also get the best results from E-Readers News Today. So, and do, you, do you notice that it worked? So you did that and then saw a whole bunch of books fly off the shelves or yeah, what? And that, that's the second time that I hit number one in my, okay. in my genre category. Gotcha. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. Oh. All right. So that's one huge surges in books when you did that promo stacking. Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you were going, go ahead, Rhonda. I'm sorry. I was like, I'm, totally no, no, going to squirrel us. No, I was uh, just going to move around to social media um, because yeah. that would be free, probably the freest of them all, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also go like do some graphics. I did some graphics on um, PicMonkey and BookBrush mm -hmm. and some of them I did on, U on YouTube, not YouTube, Photoshop mm -hmm. and um, just posted them. Instead of paying for an Amazon ad, I actually made an ad and posted it on Facebook mm. and ask people to share it. Oh, that's so very that's clever. Of, yeah. And I, I joined some readers, Facebook groups. And the one I've had the best luck with is avid Christian readers. Um, they are avid Christian readers. <laughs> 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 uh, they are not lying when that, uh, that is the true name of that group. And on Saturdays, you can promote yourself if you're mm. an author. So I've put those ads that I made into that group on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and the, you know, the images having professional looking ad images is important and it's pretty easy to do. Um, like I made mock-ups of my book on cover vault. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. So you made a specific point to talk about images are important. So can you give us like, um, a bullet point list of what to do if you're creating an image, what's the first thing you do? How do you choose what your image is going to be? Right. Why are they important? What do you yeah. mean? Well, you want to catch the person. You want them to stop scrolling. Um, I was watching a marketing thing a long time ago. I couldn't tell you who did it. And I don't even think it was about books. It was just about social media. Oh, it was for church stuff. It was this guy who does social media for churches. And he's like, he's talked about stopping the scroll. So, you know, you're scrolling. Mm -hmm. You want mm -hmm. something that's going to stop the scroll. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's a lot of advice out there. I took David Gogren's advice again. I highly recommend him. He's got some free courses on self-publishing that are really good. And he talked about um, having your price inside a box or a little, you know, a background. Like I have mine one. It's like a, a rectangle with a triangle on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And he recommends putting that in bright red because bright red seems to be something that stops the scroll. <clears throat> he didn't use okay. those words. Those are my words. And then putting your price in that. Um, and he talked about colors. Um, I Obviously, your book cover, if you have a good book cover, that's going to 
to attract attention, it's mm -hmm. it's it works really well to have your book cover in the ad. Okay. And then I put um, on my one ad I just did. I put Jack London meets Frank Peretti. Wow! So yeah, you booked me. Yeah. And then I put um, one of the I can't just last the word reviews from one of my Amazon reviewers on that ad also. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, so I wanted to just, it? yeah, no, but I did want to say in the chat that Piper is pointing out publisher rocket is $97 right now. I don't know what I paid for it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, everyone it does go on sale. Mm -hmm. um, also Maria says she wants to know with your promo stacking, Tina, were you offering a discount of your books or were you offering a free thing or what, when you did those yes. promo stacks for January and February, I had marked my ebook down to 99 cents and that's what I was promoting in those, mm -hmm. in those, uh, newsletter paid newsletter promos. Mm -hmm. All and right. now and Teresa, I marked it back up to two ninety nine. Teresa wants to know if you know where you're at in your genre category now. I could look it up. Yeah, while you're doing that. Um, also, Teresa, that average Christian reader group, I have a similar question. I don't know if they would like you ask for betas in there, but I also want to know, are these Christians who read or readers who want Christian books? <laughs> like I'm you trying can, to You can't out. even talk about books that are not in the Christian genre. All right. Well, then I know. I know. And okay. then what about the other question? Um, as far as will they allow her to ask for betas in there? I really don't know the answer to that. All right. I mean, I hmm. could find it out, but I don't yeah. know it at this nah, point. Maybe you on know, Saturday. Can... It seems like on Saturdays that could be yeah. uh, uh, molded into an advertising thing. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm assuming. But, you know, they have a list of rules when you go to join. And the administrators are very nice. So you could always ask. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right now, my book is at, let me and, and this is the Kindle store, so it's different. Most of my number ones were with the ebook in the Kindle category. So um, the paperback is not doesn't sell as well. So its category, its rankings are not. Yeah, and the categories all, so. are different. The categories mm -hmm. are different that sell. When you do Publisher Rocket, they offer you, are you looking for a book category or ebook category? And it's interesting how very, very different the results are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So I've been averaging about a book a day on Amazon, which according to Ally, which is the Alliance of Independent Authors, that Kindle or Kindle, Amazon likes the steady book a day, two books a day better than the spikes in sales. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll organically push your book um, more if you have that kind of steady thing. So right mm -hmm. now I'm at number, I'm at 257 in Christian futuristic fiction, 309 on Christian fantasy on the Kindle store and 433 in Christian fantasy. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. So now you'll sell books just based on a little bit of work and you'll have mm -hmm. a little wave of momentum that'll keep propelling you forward. So getting that number one, mm -hmm. Um, badge is not just for bragging rights. It really does translate yeah. into sales because the more you're selling, the more Amazon is happy to promote you to people without having mm -hmm. to pay for advertising. So if you are someone who does not have a budget for ads, you want to make sure your categories are on point. You want to make sure you're taking mm -hmm. advantage of your social media, you're building a mailing list and all the things that can sell mm -hmm. books without having to buy ads. Right. Yeah. Tina, um, you may have already done this and I just missed it, but is there any way that you could have posted or still part of your audiobook anywhere for people to listen to your narrator? Because yeah, I think great. that is such a brilliant thing that you've done to hire a narrator who sounds like the character in your book. Yeah, um, I could do that. I haven't. Um, but that is definitely a possibility. Mm -hmm. And another thing I wanted to mention about um, Facebook groups is I joined the fan club of some authors that were similar to me. Uh, particularly the Last War fan group with Ryan Shaw. I actually read all his books. I've read all his books. And um, he likes to give advice to, uh, to new authors. And he had given me some advice and then told me, now when your book comes out, let me know. And I had forgotten about that until a couple of weeks. Was it last week? And I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you, my book came out. And he went and read my look inside, read all my reviews, and went into the group and promoted my book. 
Yay! And said, um, I looked at her look inside. Her reviews are great. And I felt like this is a book I can, put, I can show to the members of this group. That's right. Somebody earlier in the chat said that it, the the big factor was that your book is well written and it is a great story. And I just didn't want to interrupt what we were talking about to hit that comment. I, I can't remember who said, I think it was Maria but or Piper, but whoever it was in our chat, our very supportive, awesome chat. They're right, Tina, you wrote a great book. So do not diminish that particular fact. If you guys want to be a number one bestseller, it starts with writing a great book. You're right. Okay, we are getting close to the end of um, everything. So we need to find out, Tina, what would you do differently next time? Or what would you do the same? Well, I think I would go in, I, I like the idea that I would, I'll be going into it next time with more knowledge mm -hmm. um, of, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing the first mm -hmm. time. I just happened to follow a bunch of advice that I had gotten from more experienced writers. And I was experimenting with that advice and I hit the jackpot. Um, but mm -hmm. I think I would go in with a more strategic plan mm -hmm. and also maybe have the kind of situation where I could release books closer together because Amazon really does like it if your books are like 30 or 60 or 90 days apart as you release them. And so they'll push, you'll get more momentum that way. Um, I'm not sure that I could do that though. Yeah, That's, you don't, uh, you're not patient. Like you don't have patience for like, you, it's not meant to be negative. It's meant to be positive. Like there's an activator or something that's happening in you where you don't want to wait around. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I really felt like I needed to just get it published to feel like I had finished what I started. Yes. Because you said it had been 10 years or something like that. Perfection <laughs> is the enemy of published, right? Or something. What was mm -hmm. that phrase you were using? Perfection is the enemy. Perfect is the enemy of done. That's it. That was what it was that you were saying. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a couple of, and, and also the things that I don't know yet, I want to know before. Right. I yeah. Um, I'm a number one learner, so I need to learn all the things. <laughs> <laughs> Including Russian web search development. <laughs> what? <laughs> don't you remember last summer I took that yes. web development course? It, it's a Russian web development oh. course that they had just translated into English and they needed beta testers. Uh-huh. It has yep. zero interest in web search development, but, or web, I don't know. It's Coding not or whatever. Work. It was, um, anyway, developing websites, web developer course. That's what it was. But I had great fun learning. Uh, now, Jamie, you have done some marketing of your own. Is there anything you want to add on top of what Tina said today? Um, actually my marketing stinks on ice, but guess what? Like I kind of hardly did any marketing. Like I knew that Amazon wanted categories. Why did I know that? Because when you go to publish your book, it says enter categories and you're like, what? So before I had rocket, I was just on my own to try to figure it out. And this is not three years into a podcast where I had heard anybody talking about any of that stuff. So now I just went back this past week and based on our sage advice, I went and updated my categories using KDP Rocket this time. I'm not going to say, oh, look at all the books I sold now, because first of all, it takes up to 72 hours for any changes to become effective. I also changed my subtitles to actually have a subtitle, um, hmm. which I really, really, really cringe at. But supposedly, it's what readers want. So they know what your book is all about. So I'm doing it. And we're going to see. If, uh, well, I mean, I can't sell a negative number of books because I put a subtitle on them. So I'm not really seeing how it could hurt to try it. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm having a lot of fun just because like I had a lot of fun redoing my covers for Second Chance and Second Nature. They're very retro kind of 70s now, which I think is fun. And I think they communicate the genre a little better than what I had going on before. So anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I can't say I've seen any remarkable results, but I'm trying to be more of a do as I do and do as I say instead of, well, just go do this, people. Don't just listen to me talk about marketing and then you go do it. So, <laughs> okay. Well, um, any last comments before we move on to the feeding of the backs? Um, I would just like to say it was the grace of God. And I feel like I had dedicated this book to his and him and I had prayed 
uh, bathe the whole process in prayer. And I feel like um, that the success is all on him. Amen. That's very Good beautiful. You. Good That's for awesome. you. Okay. Well, then let's beat our backs. Yeah, okay. it's a great so, last thought. Yeah. For anybody who uh, has not been with us before, um, our feedback time is this. Uh, on the podcast, we submit a raw, fresh, unedited piece. It helps us develop a safe community for receiving criticism because we each take turns being utterly vulnerable. Um, that's a writing group rule, by the way. Uh, because these are new, unedited works, we do not criticize, we only encourage. Once again, we were given 15 minutes to write a prompt that we heard at the beginning of the 15 minutes. This week, the prompt is Jamie. I don't remember. Uh, timing I is mean, everything. <laughs> so you want to point? Yes. Yes. Please All go. Right. <clears throat> All right. It's a matter of timing, Carolyn said, frowning at her wristwatch. I told Sheila I'd have the cupcakes to her at 10, yet we still have all the decorating to do. Her head fell into her hands, and her auburn beach waves fell in a sweeping wave to the floor below. Even in her grief, she was a goddess, lithe and willowy, bending with the emotion but not breaking, not brittle and rigid like her cold sister. Timing is everything, Dom agreed. He wanted to go to her, to slip one arm around that slender waist and use the other to sweep that hair into the gentlest of love knots around his curious fingers. But he knew the timing for such a move would have to be exquisite. Why isn't Cora Beth helping with the arrangements? Well, you know how busy she is. Busy with what? Well, the gala, of course. The gala. Dom's mouth became a thin line. He passed a palm over it to hide the tell. He'd managed to keep his true feelings about Korobath hidden until now. There seemed no reason to rock that particular boat. It was cruising along just fine. Korobath has been in charge of that gala for almost a decade. By now, she's got a fleet of minions doing all the grunt work for her. I promise she's got time to help you with a few crummy arrangements. The beautiful chin tipped up, but too quickly, and the brow split wide over those cornflower blue eyes. Did I do all right with the cupcakes? She asked. Dom wanted to kill himself. He spotted his misstep. Why, oh why, had he called the present arrangements crummy? The cupcakes are fine, Dom said. Everything is fine, I promise. It was not possible for Dom to stop his natural inclination to comfort the girl, and he moved thoughtlessly to her, bending awkwardly over her to grasp her hands in his and smiling warmly down her at her as he spoke. But once the words were finished and nothing hung between the pair but a silence thick with his desire for her, he found himself unable to let go of her hands. Mr. Carpenter, she breathed his name, a half question, and he dropped to his knees before her. Oh, Caroline was all he managed before he dropped his head into her lap and began to weep. Oh, Mr. Carpenter, the young girl's voice was impossible to hear over Dom's weeping, though he could sense her entire body becoming rigid as if to stand. Please stay, I'm undone, he begged, clutching at her, his grip easing as he felt her sink back into the chair. His weeping continued for several moments, most of it manufactured at this point, for the benefit of deciding how best to proceed. She was stroking his hair now, murmuring sweet kitten-like things, and he could feel the gentle shifting in her body that indicated she was looking around the room as if for help, even though they'd been alone all afternoon. I'm sorry, he finally said, swiping with childish fervor at the tears on his face, but he did not stand. Three, two, one. Wow. <clears throat> First of all, our hair sounds gorgeous. <laughs> I was inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, the something that really stuck with me is he used the wrong word accidentally and it can just mm -hmm. ruin. I, that's just so real. Thank you. Wow. That was really a great story. Was her eyebrow splitting weird? Did you picture like a big hatchet coming down on her forehead or did eyebrow splitting work? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, it totally worked for me. Okay. I pictured her mm -hmm. eyes coming apart. So mm -hmm. I said eyebrow splitting, but then I mm -hmm. couldn't get this hatchet image out of my head. Oh. And I was. I never thought of an hatchet. <laughs> Right. That's just my weird coming out. Okay. That's the other version of this book. I'm going to write that one. Oh. No. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's for the other podcast. I just have so many questions. Oh, yes. Are you intrigued? Yes. 
I didn't want to stop writing it because the ending of this is like, ah, like I just, I wanted the door to open. The door was going to open to interrupt, you know? And it's like three, two, one. No. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, you're in charge. When we're done here, finish it. And post well, we'll it for us all to read. We'll see. We'll see. Or you could do like I did and finish it next week. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So is she next then, Rhonda? Are you going to go next? Yes. Uh, go ahead, Tina. Um, I want to hear the ending. Okay. Well, I don't know that it's over because I never got to the prompt, but I was on no. my way. <laughs> okay. For once, um, I actually do. Counts. We swapped. We swapped <laughs> today. Yeah. And um, so this is a continuation of last week's story. So if you want to know what happened before this, you're going to have to go back and listen to the podcast. So mm. there you go. Okay. Jerry wasn't sure what to say to the girl who'd just thrown a pot of flowers at the shop owner. He'd stepped out onto the sidewalk with his flowers to find her standing there, hands balled into fists at her side and her cheeks a ruddy color. The fire in her eyes caused him to wonder if lightning bolts really could emanate from them and singe him. Mm. Are you Okay. When she heard the question and saw it was him, her, her cheeks turned an even deeper shade of red. Crap, she said. I'm sorry you had to witness that. Oh, no apology necessary. It was the most entertaining thing I've witnessed all week. Glad to be of service. There was an awkward pause. Jerry didn't seem to be able to tear his eyes from her. Would you like to have dinner with me? He blurted out the words without thinking, and now he watched the fire in those hazel eyes deepen. What will the woman you bought those flowers for think of that? Oh, these? These are from my dear Aunt Sally. I'm just on my way to go visit her. I've been away for a while. The cocked eyebrow and hand on one hip told him she didn't believe him. Your dear Aunt Sally? Is that the best you could come up with? No, really. Her name is Sally, and we've always called her that as a joke, you know, because of the order opera of operations thing. You should come with me. She would love you. Well, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. My keys and purse are still in the back room. She gestured toward the shop. Jerry thrust the flowers out. Hold my flowers, he said, then turned and went back into the shop. The owner was still fuming, muttering to herself as she swept up the potting soil from the floor. Did you forget something? Yes, ma'am. If you could direct me to the back room, I would like to retrieve my very temperamental future wife's keys and purse. The woman's eyes opened in surprise. She pointed toward a door that said employees only, and Jerry followed her direction. There was only one purse on the counter in the small, narrow room. He opened it, fishing out the black leather wallet and opening it. Invasion of privacy? Yes. But he needed to know the name of his future wife. Three, two, one. So part three next week. Jamie, you're muted. Since I was muted, put the best possible comment in there where I my lips were moving, and that is what I said. Oh. But really, <laughs> really, what I said was uh, something. Yeah, yeah. Whatever Rhonda was saying. What did you say? Oh, part three next week. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm. I have to admit, for a second, I had to figure out what Dear Aunt Sally stood for, and I can't think of what it is. But it's I love order of that in there. Please Mark excuse time. my dear Aunt Sally parentheses, right. exponents, um, oh. multiplication, division. Okay, I lost interest. Subtraction. Math, okay. Or um, addition, subtraction. Yeah. Okay. It's a thing to remember the order <laughs> of operations. Oh. Yeah. My, right. my daughter would call it a rhymey game because uh -huh. it helps you if you're not math inclined to remember that you're supposed mm -hmm. to multiply and divide before you add or subtract. Mm -hmm. That's the only way I could remember. And you have to do uh, the parentheses and stuff first. Stuff in parentheses first. I'm guessing that Kristen knows exactly what we were talking about because she just wrote P E M D A S. So yep. yeah. please excuse my dear Aunt Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well. Well, you're not alone, Rhonda, because I got confused about the thing to remember the guitar strings. Eddie eight oh. grenades. Goodbye. Eddie. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that one before. I like that one though. <laughs> well, I can remember it. Yes. Eddie ate grenades. Poor oh, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, I just love that little bit of backstory. Uh, I love backstory in books anyway, but you just put it in there just so slickly. 
I know what I you're doing. Really you're it. stalling because you're hoping that we'll forget that you have to read yours. Oh, I already went, didn't I? No. Oh, I just, I forgot to say that my, my piece was dedicated to Jennifer since she's not here. Oh, oh yeah. I kind of did the romance thing. So we okay. wouldn't miss her too much. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. That's exactly why I was exactly. going to yeah. 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 So we'll see if right, Rhonda yeah. did the same thing. <laughs> well, there could be a romance component to this. Today, I wrote y'all a poem because timing is everything. Just sound like a poem title to me. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a stanza missing, but don't look for it. Okay. <laughs> well, now Are I'm going ready? to have to because you said something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's toward the end. It's the second from the last that I still have to do. Okay. The leaves, okay, timing is everything. Mm -hmm. The leaves on the trees, the lap of the tide, the birth of a child, the tick of a clock. The day you said goodbye, the day you said hello, the day you prayed in fear, the day you knelt in praise. The journey of a turtle, the path of, path of a puffy cloud, the toddler's first step, the unfurling of a rose. Too early is immature, too late is opportunity lost. Too soon is empty, too distant is hollow. Missing stanza, waiting in faith, Stomping anxiety, refraining from fear, patience is reward. The end. All the snaps. <laughs> Thank you. All Thank you. This, all the hand Thank you. Waves. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Yay. You're very I'm happy. you an open mic at Beat Poetry Night. I'm sticking you up there. You are going to, that is amazing. I really so need positive. to have that in writing so I can just chew on it. Sure. I will send it right to you. That's the kind of thing you've got to, you've got to read it slow and you just have to kind of. Do you have a blog? Your eyes between each one. I do, do have, have a blog. blog. You can post that, Ron. I do. It's ddbowman.com. And would you like me to there? post it on there? I certainly Please. will. I'll do that yes. as soon as we're done here. And then um, spread, let, us, let us know on social media that you did it so there would be somewhere for us to click because okay. that was so good. I'm sure everybody wants to put their eyeballs on it. Because the visual peeps like you, Rhonda, imagine how much they would savor being mm -hmm. able to look at those words. Because they oh, yeah. were obviously very thoughtfully chosen. It's very, oh, very you. excellent work. And the world deserves to see it. Well, I appreciate that. And you have some um, great praise in the chat. Piper aw. said, wow, Rhonda, all that in 15 minutes. Oh, actually, okay. it only took me about seven. Um, so but, Tina gets compared to Frank Peretti and Rhonda gets compared to Ecclesiastes. How am I ever ah, going to yes, match I love the bar? Book. You guys are setting the bar way too high. You can I be love Revelation. Ecclesiastes. You be no, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Just as confusing and chaotic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, I really, I really wanted nice to everybody. share what um, Maria said. She said it's called B O D M A S in the UK. Oh, bracket. Oh, right. than oh, okay. Not that I really understand it. Maria, the only reason I understand it is because I'm a homeschool mom and I had to learn it to teach it. <laughs> so there's that. Mm hmm. Our chatters are so great. There's lots of praise for uh, you, yeah. Rhonda. Um, well, and I appreciate you giving us a poem. You haven't done that before. It was really good, especially yeah. for 15 well, minutes. Welcome. It was a refreshing good. change of, I don't know why, what change of what, pace or? Uh -huh. Well, you were going to say scenery, down? and I'm going to stick with scenery. It was a refreshing change of scenery. It really was. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm glad that I could uh, be that for you guys yeah. today. Awesome. It was great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So um, now we're going to move on to, oh, and by the way, any chatters that, or anybody, any listener who has um, used our sprint prompt today, we would love to read it. Please just tag us, um, post it wherever you're going to post it and tag us so that we know that it's out there. Or you can post it on our Facebook page, right? <clears throat> okay. I first said, uh, Jamie, yours reminded me of the series of unfortunate events, Guy. Who always goes over the top. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. he's not a good guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you'll have to read back to the chat because uh, I believe it was Shell who said that she reads horror fiction and uh, she did think of a hatchet <laughs> or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right, ladies. Well, um, let's start wrapping it up and tell me what is going on next for you guys. All right. Who do you want first? Uh, how about Jamie? All right, I have a um, monthly, bi-monthly newsletter that comes out on every other Monday. If you would like to get it, you could go to www.writingshorts.net 
writing, like writing a letter, shorts, like not pants, Dot net, you can sign up. You will get a free copy of my ebook when you subscribe, and you'll get lots of exclusive newsletter subscriber only goodies in every newsletter, including one free short story. So sign up today, writingshorts.net. Okay, everybody do that. I have, everybody else should. Tina? Tell well, us why me. don't you go next, Rhonda? Um, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> okay, I'm traveling this week. I'm leaving for Michigan on the 31st. And I'm. That's not what you Well, I might be. Yeah, I probably will not be here Friday because um, I'm flying my nephew down here to ride back with me. And I'm not sure where we're going to be on Friday. I might be home already or wow. I could be in a hotel with no internet. I have no idea. So don't be passed me. out from traveling, possibly. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I could okay, be outside well, gardening. We'll miss you. Well, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, other than that, though, um, we are chugging along heavily on our editing. We are really making progress. And uh, it's, I'm just so excited how much progress has gotten made on this. It's going to be okay. published so soon. So can we talk a little bit about the fact that you're calling yourself we so people will understand oh. it's not some strange you know, psychological coping mechanism that you have oh. where you refer to yourself as we. So don't talk about my schizophrenia, you're saying? Hey, okay. no. no, let her have whatever pronouns she wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. So uh, my mother is the other half of my writing team. She is the other D in Dee Dee Bowman. Mm -hmm. And um, she is going back through it scene by scene to um, add in some things we added at the end. And uh, add a little bit more filler to it. Not filler, mm -hmm. like not junk filler, but good filler. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, yeah, we're just, um, when she's done with that, then uh, Jamie's going to read it and I'm going to finish editing. March 31st was our original date. And honestly, mm -hmm. to be a couple weeks behind, I'm thrilled that we're okay. as far as we are. All right. That's amazing. Let's look okay. at some of the chatters. Um, you're a little early, Rhonda, because... National Poetry Start Month starts in April. Oh, and really? Kristen is working on poetry daily in April. Oh, mm. let's all do it. Let's all stick oh my together. Goodness. Do it. Maybe, maybe I could be convinced, but how would we be in touch? Kristen, mm. if you make it happen and reach out, maybe I'll find you. Rhonda will track me down. What about if we all started posting in the Transatlantic Facebook page? Mm. Well, someone else will have to prompt me. Okay. <laughs> all right. We'll figure it out. Out. Okay, so Shell is starting writing on a short story she outlined. Finish reading and review another arc. Reviews are so wise because that's something you mm -hmm. can put on your social media and your websites that mm -hmm. showcases that you can string together, you know, intelligent thoughts. Like it's so wise to be doing that, Shell, because you're reading anyway. Why not do a review? Right. Right. Piper says, my what's next? Taking another look at my keywords and maybe trying oh. one of those newsletter ads for my book. Mm, yeah. Let right. us know how it works for you. Yeah. Maria Johnson, I hope to submit my third historical fiction novel to my publisher next week. Wow. Also hoping to, hit, hoping to hit my goal of 50,000 words of my fourth historical fiction novel. Wow. Also starting wow. Camp Nano. Maria's been working at a pace that is amazing lately. She's been like the Energizer Bunny. She's everywhere doing all kinds of stuff. It's crazy. It's awesome. Okay. Um, uh, Teresa, oh my goodness. There we she go. says, lining up betas and prepping for book delivery, planning for Camp Nano, two hours of writing every day in a new draft but not necessarily with the goal of finishing because she has just too much going on. Yeah, she's got little uh, McNugget kids running around still, little little ones. Mm -hmm. McNugget kids? Yeah. That's, that's a new one for me. Yeah. They're just little kid McNuggets. Like, they're, they're people McNuggets because they're not all grown up yet. They're just little teeny chicks running around. I don't know. I guess because I think a little baby chickens, and then I turn them into chicken nuggets. I don't know. Oh, see, I was totally okay. going along the line of they eat Happy Meals with nuggets, with chicken nuggets. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, you are what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, my what's next is, um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm finishing up um, the Write Better Faster course this week. And it's been really, really good. And I have to choose 
my one thing to change. Mm -hmm. So I like, I want to change all the things, but you're only supposed to change one. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm continuing to write uh, book two and do my newsletter and trying to get ready for Easter. Yeah, it's crazy because you're going to so, have people hopefully for the first time uh, for your home church that you yep. and your husband are um, planting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. so Mental yep. Ministries is that. If, if you guys need a virtual home church, you know, why not check right. them out? And mm -hmm. if you're in the area, uh, six o'clock on, on uh, Easter night, we're having dinner. We're mm -hmm. having ham and potatoes and rolls. I so think we'll be home by then. come on over. Yeah, that's great. Um, oh, and if anybody, address, just hit me up on Facebook. If anybody uh, likes to get an early start on their writing day, Kristen Hall does um, early morning productivity, 6 a.m., way too early for us. Um, but if y'all are into it, her and wow. Teresa and some other gals are very busy. And then I know Jen on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday also does productivity sprints starting at 8, and that's with Christianity Writers. So wow. if y'all need some accountability to keep writing, there's where you can find it right now. Maybe I can join Kristen's uh, before I go to bed. <laughs> it's like end your day with some writing sprints, you know. Yeah, yes. My days have gotten a lot later since I've been. Well, there. I mean, she can serve the very young with the, you know their party hardy stuff, and she can serve the seasoned writers among us. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Piper and Maria are regulars too. Teresa said, "Oh, you guys all have a little click. It's mm. so cute." Yeah, awesome. you guys can visit me in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your worms. It's just yeah. too early for me. I just can't do it. Yeah. All right, ladies. I think it's time for us to wrap this up. Sure. Yeah. Um, any last thoughts about anything we've said today before we close? Our chatters are awesome. Yes, our yes. chatters are awesome. I enjoy and them. So I'm much. sorry I'm not as good at Je as Jennifer at keeping uh, up with it all. Oh, oh you did a great I'm job. I'm doing the stream yard thing today that Jennifer usually does, mm -hmm. and I'm not used to it. So if I missed anyone, I'm sorry. Um, you did great. Um, you did great, great, Tina. And we did miss you, Jennifer. That's maybe yes. one more thing you want to say. It's not the same yes. without her. But uh, hopefully you, guys... you keep talking about. Right. Oh, wait. Jason has a what's next. He's writing. Writing is taking a back seat because he has to do a message. He's doing a message. Doesn't Jason want to be a pastor? So that's yeah. good, right? He's being invited to do a message. Awesome. For good Friday. Friday. That's an yeah. important day. Yeah. 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 Wow. You know, one, one year I made my Bible study watch The Passion of the Christ. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, just to kind of, uh, I wanted to tell this story earlier when we were talking about scrolling past stopping the scroll. And, you know, scrolling wasn't a word we used very much in the 70s. And so mm -hmm. in Bible school, the teacher was like, does anybody know what a scroll is? And I raised my hand. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they hop around the yard and they hide nuts. And apparently Aww. the whole of high school Aww. erupted into a conversation about how I know what a scroll is. And I, and yeah. it like was devolved into chaos. So anytime... Now people say scroll all the time, but we were little and we did not know what that was. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. Very that cute. That's so adorable. Uh, and yes, Piper, thank you so much. Um, Jason, if your church, if you're going to be broadcast on YouTube anywhere or anywhere, yeah. please let us know. We would yeah, love to watch. Yeah, we see it. Yeah, for sure. That's a really good point. Yeah. And Unless it's between is, uh, 10 and 11. Well, does that mean I can from What? What, Tina? I was going to say, does that mean I can promote my Wednesday night Bible study that I teach? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We're all about that stuff here. If you all are looking yeah. for a way to get plugged in, we've got it for you. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Jason, um, well, we can't keep the podcast going so that Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. He's leaving everybody in suspense. <laughs> I guess you have to go find yeah. him and make him your friend on Facebook if you want to know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, ladies, we are just rambling now. So yeah. um, we are going to have to end this. This concludes the Christian Indie Writers podcast. So until next week, may your pen be prolific, your deadlines be met, and may all of your words honor Christ. Bye. He got it in in the nick of time. <laughs> he did, and we're still alive. <laughs>